We will begin this teardown by removing the front plastic cover. To do this, we will be using this tool as a wedge to separate the front cover from the body of the case. Once I've gone all around the outside, I will use the tool to break apart a sticky foam holding the front display to the body. I then went around to the final side and used my tool to separate the front. After I did this, it was pretty easy to pull off the front cover. Right here you can see the foam that was holding the cover to the main body. And right here is the actual display. I'm guessing that this is probably the ribbon cable to the display on the other side. As you can see right here, this cable kind of goes behind the back of this frame, so to remove that display, we're going to need to remove this screen right here first. Before we do this, I'm just going to put it on the heating pad for a couple of minutes. This will make it much easier to remove. You can already see that the corner is popping up. This probably means there's not a lot of adhesive, so it should be pretty easy to remove. You need to be careful when lifting up the screen because you don't want the ribbon cable to get caught and damaged. Here's what the back of the screen looks like, pretty typical. And we're just going to take this and put it to the side for now. Now that that's off, we're going to want to reheat it so that we can remove this front display. This display is a little more fragile, so I took my time and made sure I didn't break it. Okay, so we got the screen off, and it's a good thing I was very careful, because this looks like it could break very easily. So now that we've removed that, um, there's not really much we can remove except for the motherboard. So you see these screws right here, uh, we're going to remove those and see if we can get the motherboard out. Okay, now that we've removed the screws, uh, we're going to try to pull it up. It kind of gets caught at the bottom, so you got to put it at an angle. So we only need this piece right here. So the motherboard's right here. Hopefully we can get it out. Okay, here's me removing it. I sped it up because it took quite a while. Also heated it up a little to make it easier.
So it took a while to take this off. I also might have bent it a little bit. Hopefully it will go right back on pretty easily. So here's the motherboard. I'm noticing it's pretty compact, even though they didn't need to do this, since there's plenty of room it could have spread out to. We just finished removing everything from this half of the dual screen. So we're gonna put the motherboard in this aside and we are gonna move on to the other half. On this half, we are gonna start by removing the hinges and we're gonna do this pretty much the same way we remove the front. When I was doing this, I found this weird plastic cylinder in there. I'm guessing it's mostly just to keep the shape. I struggled with this for a while. I later realized that there were hidden screws on the top and bottom, so I'll come back to this. I decided to move on to this bottom area and see if I could get it open. After I was able to open it, I noticed that there were similar things on the side, so I went to open that up. So right here and here I found some more screws, and there's probably one right under here too. I'm going to quickly remove these screws, and then we should be able to fully remove the hinges. Right here is where I find those hidden screws that I was missing before, so we're going to quickly remove those. After that's done, it comes apart pretty easily. Here's what the dual screen hinges look like. I can tell from the feel and the look that they have a very high quality build. Since the bottom hinge has the cord going through it, we're going to need to remove the screws to separate the two sides. It looks like this cord goes underneath the back plate, so we're going to need to remove that as well. I put it back on the heating pad for a little bit, and now we're going to use this card to see if we can get underneath there.
So I got it removed. Uh, it looks like I did bend it a little bit. Hopefully that won't be too much of a problem since there's so much adhesive on the back. Now that we have that removed, you can see there are some wires down here. You've got your main one right here going in there. And then it looks like this top part up there goes up to the volume. Because there's three ribbon cables, I know there has to be some sort of motherboard hidden in this corner area. So we're going to see if we can remove that. I was correct and I found this blue motherboard over in the corner. Now all I have to do is remove the charging port and this whole section should come out. So right here you can see the small motherboard connecting them all together. These are the volume buttons and the Google Assistant button. I'm just going to quickly remove that. We're also going to remove this cord right here, but there's some blue tape covering it so we're going to have to peel that up first. So this is the wire that connects it to the motherboard. I am noticing some small damage on the cord. I believe they could have designed this a little bit better so this would not happen. They had some real innovation on their charge port. Since you can't put two ports directly on top of each other, they made a magnetic charger connected by a ribbon cable folding at 360 degrees so that it can go flat against the back. Now there's only one part I still haven't removed, and that's the physical buttons that go inside the case. With that removed, we have officially finished the teardown of the LG G8X dual screen. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a like and if you want to see more content like this, please feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching.